Welcome to the Resilient Retail Game Plan, a podcast for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable creative product business with me, Catherine Erdley. The Resilient Retail Game Plan is a podcast dedicated to one thing, breaking down the concepts and tools that I've gathered from 20 years in the retail industry and showing you how you can use them in your business. This is the real nuts and bolts of running a successful product business, broken down in an easy, accessible way. This is not a podcast about learning how to make your business look good. It's the tools and techniques that will make you and your business feel good, confidently plan, launch and manage your products, and feel in control of your sales numbers and cash flow to help you build a resilient retail business. Welcome to the Resilient Retail Game Plan. I'm your host, Catherine Erdley, as well as the founder of the Resilient Retail Club. That's my membership group and consultancy for product businesses. Find out more and use the code 10 podcast. That's one zero podcast to get £10 off your first month at resilientretailclub.com. So today I want to start with something a little bit different. As you know, my very first book, Tame Your Tiger, How to Stop Your Product Business Eating You Alive, was released on the 21st of February. And I've had so many lovely messages from you and lots of business owners saying how helpful they found it. I want to share with you a review that was left for me on amazon.co.uk. This is from Anthony D., He says, the best business tips and resources for creative product businesses. I would highly recommend this book to any creative product business owner. Catherine breaks down all the different issues that could be causing problems currently or in the future in your business and gives tips and resources to solve them. It's an in-depth guide to help you grow your business profitably. Catherine links making your business work to taming a tiger and identifies all the different parts of the tiger to different issues. I've learned so much and feel so much more confident and in control. Thank you, Anthony. I wanted to just give him a shout out. Say thank you for leaving me a review. If you have read the book and enjoyed it, then please, please head over to amazon.co.uk. You don't have to have bought the book from Amazon, but you just have to have an Amazon account and then you can leave a review. Unfortunately, it's the only platform really that allows reviews. So if you could, that would be amazing because it makes such a difference to book sales when you have reviews. So today's episode, I wanted to talk about mindset. And this is for several different reasons. First up is the conversation we've been having quite a lot inside the Resilient Retail Club recently, and that is all about the impact of your mindset on your sales. And I 100% believe that as business owners, when we lose confidence in ourselves and in our business, we tend to take less action and therefore we get stuck in the cycle of doom, as I call it. So sales drop, so we lose confidence, we take less action, so sales drop, lose confidence, take less action, and around and around we go. And I've been thinking a lot recently about mindset. And what I've come up with is four key traits that product business owners need to have in order to flourish. And I've based this off several different things. Firstly, I have based it off my own experiences in the retail industry. So that is going back all the way to the year 2000 and what business cultures worked well and when they didn't and the people working within those retailers, what worked for them and when it didn't work in terms of driving sales. And then also equally the hundreds of businesses that I've worked with over the last five years. So this April marks five years since I've started my business. And over that time, I have worked with literally hundreds of businesses, as well as, of course, having the Resilient Retail Club membership. So I have talked to possibly even pushing it into a thousand or more businesses about running their business, what their experiences are, what it's like for them. And from all of those conversations and also from my one to one work where I've worked with some really successful product businesses, have to say a lot of my mentoring clients have just had phenomenal businesses and I've been able to work with them over an extended period of time and really understand how they operate not only in their business but also in their mindset and I've identified from all of those discussions four key traits which I'd love to share with you today because as I said mindset it is something that we can often think is a bit woo woo but actually it's really not it's extremely practical it impacts everything that we do it impacts the way we interact with our customers with our staff members if we have them with everybody else around us, with our family members. It dictates how we feel about our day, how we show up for 
social media, how we talk in our emails, everything gets impacted by it and what we actually choose to do or how far we push ourselves to promote our products and our businesses. And without it, it's really, really hard to to succeed. So the four traits then, the acronym I have come up with is CROP. I kept trying to come up with one which was more retail related, like shop or store, but I couldn't make the words fit. And then I thought, you know what? I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to go with crop. So the four traits are curiosity, resilience, objectivity and positivity. So what does that mean? So the first one, curiosity. This is really about exploring new ideas, learning from feedback, experimenting, being innovative, So this is something that is really critical. And I think it is one of the most underestimated traits for entrepreneurs. Curiosity simply means that when things go wrong, the first question you ask yourself is, huh, wonder why that happened. And when you get into that curious mindset, it makes you feel so much more positive and action focused than if you immediately take it to mean something bad, you know, oh, this is a disaster. And it's not to say that if things happen, you know, maybe sales are slow, maybe you're falling out of love with your business, maybe you are finding it hard to get engagement on Instagram, then it's not to say that you can't have feelings about that. Not, this is not about toxic positivity and only engaging with the things that make you feel good. But again, if you can ask yourself, well, what happened It shifts you into looking at things in a way that will help you course correct and make changes instead of getting stuck in this really negative rut. So curiosity for me is about asking yourself questions. It's about being willing to try things and have them fail and then learn from those failures instead of beating yourself up. And it's really important, I think, for product businesses because I don't know, sometimes I think it's delightful, sometimes I think it's infuriating, but one of the things about running a product business is that you can do lots of pre-research beforehand with your products, but ultimately, I often say the proof of the pudding is in the eating, so that means that you can think something's going to work, but until it's in front of your customers, they're the ones who are going to make the final decision, and it's because I think there are just so many different elements that go into whether or not somebody likes something. It could be that the colour is one that they've seen everywhere, and now they're interested in it. It could be that the price point's right on, that the feel of it, the look of it, just really hits the sweet spot for your customer. And I think that that's really, really hard to know beforehand. And so curiosity means that you're going to try things, you're going to test and learn. And I think that is the lifeblood of product businesses. If you're sitting here listening to this thinking, oh, you know, my sales have slowed down. When was the last time you tried something new? How can you try things in a way that is minimal risk? I'm not saying that you constantly have to keep sinking money into new product after new product, but keep learning, keep trying new things. I think it should always be going back to the 80-20 rule, which crops up so many times in business. 80% of your products should be ones that you feel really pretty certain are going to do well. So these are things that are repeats of your bestsellers or or a new version of your bestsellers or something that you just have a lot of history of selling. And then 20% should almost always be something a little bit wild and out there because that's how you learn. That's how you see new directions for your businesses. And your business does need to keep moving and it does need to keep evolving. And you do need to keep introducing new things to keep your customers coming back for more. So curiosity for me is also then about that willingness to experiment. It's about trying to be innovative. It's trying to ask yourself what if, and it really helps with, I think, the second point, which is resilience. So trait number two is resilience. So obviously (laughs) my entire business is called Resilient Retail. I have the phrase trademarked. So obviously resilience is something that I feel very strongly about, but I think curiosity breeds resilience. And the reason for that is because if you, quite simply, if your first response, as I said earlier, to something not going right is to, instead of saying, oh, it must be my fault, is to say, I wonder what happened, then you will be much more resilient because you will be able to roll with the punches and learn from your errors instead of getting stuck in that negative cycle and negative self-talk then you can move forward and that is really for me is resilience so resilience is about being able to overcome challenges cope with uncertainty I think that's a big one adapt to change and persevere in the face of setbacks so I think that this is something that it's not entirely an easy trait to cultivate I think it's just something you have to recognize that you need to do 
And again, it's almost just going into this thing, accepting that none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. We all do things in our businesses that don't work. But the difference, the choice that we have is how we react to it. And I would like to say that that goes very much for big retailers too. Big retailers make mistakes all the time. They bring out ranges that nobody likes. They introduce products that don't sell. They order too many of things that don't sell. I remember a story of someone who accidentally turned the replenishment off on their barbecue charcoal for a major chain and it was the hottest weekend of the year. So I once accidentally cleared a warehouse of chandeliers and sent them all out to stores and those were massive boxes. I've known of people who've done a mistype and sent so many cartons of notepads to one particular store that they had to go send a taxi to go get it back. I mean, things happen all the time in retailers and in small businesses, they happen too. I know I've made expensive mistakes in my business. I've certainly launched things that didn't sell. I've certainly hired people to do things that didn't really make a difference. But for me, I think then the question is, and it kind of, again, coming back to curiosity, is what can you learn from it? And there's a the great saying, you know, you either win or you learn, so you never lose. And I think that that is true. Even when things go wrong, there's a lot of stuff you can learn from it. So for me, resilience is also about coping with uncertainty, for sure. Adapting to change, I think that is absolutely crucial. And I think that's the real dividing line that I've seen with small businesses over the last few years is the ones that are almost embracing the change and saying, okay, everything's changed again, We've got a new challenge. Okay, let's put our heads together, try and work that out. Instead of the ones who are saying, oh my goodness, I just can't believe this. this you know, I, we just need a bit of stability. Well, the truth is that I don't think there is any stability. I think that things are always going to be chaotic. I think things are always going to be up and down. So for us as product business owners, I think the key thing is developing that resilience and, and learning to how to adapt to change. Resilience to me also is about trying to build your business in a way as much as possible that you've got flexibility, that you are able to bounce back because you haven't, for example, sunk all of your money into stock and you aren't managing it. So for me, resilient businesses are also the ones that are quite nimble. They really keep an eye on their numbers. They keep an eye on things like the amount of stock that they're carrying. They don't overinvest until they're really sure. They take steps to proactively clear stock that isn't selling without getting too hung up on it. And I think for me that the resilience can be a mindset, but it's actually also a set of practical steps as well. And that brings me on to the third trait, which is objectivity. So objectivity may sound like a bit of an interesting one, but I think, again, it kind of all fits into the same picture. So objectivity is really about making data-driven decisions, validating your assumptions and avoiding too many emotional driven decisions. Now, that's not to say that we shouldn't bring our emotions into our business. I absolutely believe that we should. And that's probably for me, one of the things that was hardest about working in big retailers is that I'm a very emotional person. And I think I found it quite hard to the extent to which they don't engage their emotions in their business. So with all of that in mind, I think objectivity is important because it helps you see the big picture and it allows you to not just be governed by what you think is happening. So for me, objectivity means that you take the time once a month to sit down, you look at your best sellers, you look at your worst sellers, you look at what's going on. It means that you go through and look at your sales data over the last month and you see how things are doing as opposed to saying, oh, it's just been terrible. I can't tell you the number of times that when I've worked with people to pull their actual numbers and look at what's actually happening in their business, they're surprised because they maybe didn't realize what was their bestseller because they didn't never looked at it on a monthly basis. Or maybe they weren't aware of the fact that actually sales had been pretty good that month compared to the year before, that they just felt like it was really slow on certain days so therefore had developed this mindset that it wasn't working so objectivity is about looking at what's happening and sometimes it's about identifying okay this is where I get most of my traffic from this is where I'm going to really focus my attention it's about looking at your data it's about understanding it and I put objectivity in there because I think that it can, I, I completely understand how difficult it is when you yourself have made something, designed something, manufactured it, to then put it out in front of the world. And then if it doesn't sell, it can be absolutely devastating, like absolutely just awful, terrible, terrible feeling, like a personal sort of slap in the face. 
And I think for me, objectivity, and it maybe comes with time, it's maybe not something that you'll have right from the get-go, but objectivity, that goes back into my training for 17 years in big retailers, was that when we would be looking at those products like day in, day out, week in, week out, looking at what sold and what didn't sell, and over time you just develop a slight, well, not slight, I'd say in my case, a definite distance from it. I mean, it helped that I wasn't the person who designed the products and I wasn't the person who had sourced them worked with the manufacturer directly. I often worked with the manufacturers, but not necessarily a direct role. So for me, my role was to be objective, to sit in those rooms and to say, okay, I know everyone liked that, but it hasn't sold. What are we going to do about it? And I think that it's important. I think it's very hard for small businesses to build objectivity into what they do, but I think it's a really useful trait because again, I think it kind of comes back to this curiosity and resilience. So if you look at something and you are objective, And you say, okay, I've run my numbers. I've looked at these. This item that I thought was going to sell really well has not sold well at all. Okay, well, that's fine. Well, maybe it's not fine. I mean, you may feel emotionally that's not fine. But part of resilience is then being objective. And and I think that's where they go hand in hand. And also curiosity that comes in. So instead of saying, oh, my goodness, I spent so long designing that I can't believe it hasn't sold. Then you instead say, I wonder what happened. Okay, let me look at the numbers. Let me understand. Was it something that sold better in person, but not selling so well online, which suggests to me that the photography needs to be redone? Is it the price point? If I look at all of my other bestsellers, actually, I suddenly see that this is £45 and everything else that sold for me is in the £25 to £30 range. So you can see how this being objective suddenly elevates the kind of thought process going on in your mind out of this kind of real like, oh my goodness, I can't believe it, no one liked it, into much more of this objective, scientific, experimental, where you're able to detach yourself. And I completely recognise that this is easier said than done because in big retailers, that's the reason they have multiple teams. They have different people with different skill sets doing the different jobs. So you have one person who's designing it, coming up with the ideas, one person working with the manufacturer and working on the commercial aspects and then one person sitting there with the objectivity hat on. And it's hard because as product business owner, you have to wear all of those hats. When I look at the people who, who've who built their businesses well, who've been more resilient, who have seen sales growth, they are objective. I'm not going to say ruthless because that's not the right word for it, but they are able to say, right, this is not working. What do we do now? Let's take these actions. Okay, where are we getting the most return on our investment in terms of our ad spend? Let's lean more into that channel. Or maybe it's not working and we turn them off. Where am I getting the most traffic from? Okay, that's a channel I'm going to lean into. So you can see that that objectivity is helping them try and take some of that emotional element out of the business making decisions and base it on facts and or at least use the facts to inform the decisions that they make. And then the final trait then is positivity. So positivity, I had to put it in there because I think to get through all of this, to be curious, to be resilient, to be objective, you do also need to be positive. So positivity also helps you inspire others, create a positive culture and motivate your team if you have one, celebrate your successes. And I think that positivity is necessary because without it, it's actually really hard just to keep going if you feel like you're kind of flogging a bit of a dead horse or maybe things are tough and you've looked at your numbers and they feel really difficult. Positivity for me is the belief that it will all work out some way, somehow. That fuels then your ability to keep going, to be resilient, to be curious, to be objective. Again, positivity is something that is, it's not always easy to cultivate. It's not always easy to cultivate at all times. But I think for me, it is something that we should consider how we can be positive in our businesses Again, that is not to say this is about toxic positivity. We're not here to talk about pretending things are fine when they're not. In fact, sometimes I think, to be honest, I've worked with people who've decided to close their businesses and that has been a really positive decision because it was moving them in the right direction. So positivity doesn't mean ignoring the negatives. Positivity means being in an optimistic frame of mind and choosing to see the the upside, choosing to see the benefits, as opposed to always believing, oh, everyone hates me and my products are terrible. 
but really focusing instead on, okay, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to be able to be objective. I'm going to be able to work this out, work through it. I'm going to use my curiosity to come up with some other ideas of things that I can do or to explore new ideas. And I think that that for me is the the key for positivity. So how do you cultivate positivity? Well, interesting question. I think, to be honest, there's a few different ways. I think you go to places where you find other people who will support you and also are positive themselves. And for me, for example, I would say the Resilient Retail Club, the membership group, we definitely focus on celebrating our successes, celebrating our members. We are really focused on supporting our members and giving them everything that we can to help and support them. And the members themselves are extremely positive towards one another. I absolutely love it when somebody posts a question, you get lots of people piling on to give advice and suggestions and encouragement. The other thing that I would say is to an extent you do have to, there's a great phrase, you know, people are either radiators or they're drains. So are there drains in your life? Are there people who don't you know, who don't necessarily support what you do or understand what you do. And I think that's okay to kind of minimise, even if you just minimise talking about your business with them, not to say that you don't see them, but, you know, you just minimise the amount to which you discuss your business with them. I also think there's nothing wrong with curating your social media so that you only see people who make you feel good. I have no problem at all that if somebody starts bothering me or niggling at me for any particular reason, or even if I just feel like I see too much of their content and it's not making me feel uplifted, then I will just mute them. And I have no qualms about doing that. And I've done that consistently over probably about the last three years. And it has made a big difference to how I feel or when I'm on social media, because I know I'm only going to see content that makes me feel good. Now, it's mostly dogs and cats, if I'm completely honest. I think my explore page on Instagram is basically cat and dog videos. But (laughs) the people I do follow, it's very intentional and I know that they're going to be positive. I also think for me personally, what has made a big difference has been a gratitude journal. So every night I write, uh, just spend, you know, a few minutes writing down what I'm grateful for that day. Uh, I've done it for now for, this is my third year doing it every day. And it definitely, for me, something powerful about doing it before you go to bed because it kind of gets your mind in that grateful grateful space before you go to sleep so I definitely think there's things that you can do I also have a a playlist (laughs) of upbeat songs that I play if I want to be feeling more positive take myself out for a walk uh listen to you are a badass by Jen Sincero which is my all-time favorite for a good pep talk I think overall, it's almost like looking at that positivity as something that you're going to work on and work towards, and it will help you overall in your business. There you have it. Curiosity, resilience, objectivity, positivity, crop. Think about, do you need to crop your mindset? And I'd love to hear what you thought about today's episode. I'd love to hear about your mindset. Do you work on it in your business? Come over to Instagram at Resilient Retail Club and share what you thought, what your takeaways were. And of course, if you have a moment to rate and review the podcast in iTunes, that would be amazing. You can also rate it in Spotify. And if you have a moment to follow or subscribe, then you'll be the first to know about each new episode. And a final plea, (laughs) if you have read the book, Tanya Tiger, head on over to Amazon, leave me a review. I absolutely love it. And I'm going to be reading out reviews on the podcast. So maybe I'll be reading out yours. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, then I invite you to check out resilientretailclub.com. The Resilient Retail Club is the membership for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable product business. No more trawling Google trying to find the answers to your questions or wading through general business advice that speaks mainly to service-based businesses. Whether you're still at the idea stage or you've been going for a while but want to get more focused and organised when it comes to your business, the Resilient Retail Club is the place for you. With a library of courses tailored to creative product businesses, several live sessions a month, and a supportive and active community, the Resilient Retail Club is the perfect membership to help you hit your goals faster. Check it out at resilientretailclub.com.